Okay, welcome to chapter six. Let's look at a new verb, or technically it's not new, I'm pretty sure you learned it last year, but this is an irregular verb. There are first conjugation, second conjugation verbs, even third, fourth conjugation, but this is what we call an irregular verb. It has an irregular pattern, and so it's called irregular. This is the verb sum. It's the to be verb. It means simply I am. So let's look at how we decline this in, in, in present, imperfect, and future. Sum es est, sumus estis sunt. That's the present tense. And you translate it, I am, you are, he is, we are, you are, they are. Imperfect is aram, aras, arat, aramus, aratus, arant. How that, notice how that doesn't look anything like sum es est, sumus estis sunt. It's irregular. And so because of that, we just have to learn these patterns, but they're pretty easy to remember. So in the imperfect, it's I was, you were, he was, we were, you were, they were. Then the future tense, it's a ro, a ris, a rit, a remis, a ritis, a runt. And this is translated, I will be, you will be, he will be, we will be, you will be, they will be. Now, again, you may have already learned this last year, so this may not be new for you. Uh, but if it is new, then you should be able to learn it fairly quickly. Just memorize those um, chants and the translations. Now, once you've mastered the verb sum, and if you need to, go back and repeat these several times, there's another irregular verb called posum, and it's very much related to this verb. Notice it looks a lot like it, except we've added either a POS or a POT in front of the verbs you already learned. So look, see if you can see sum s est, sumus estis sunt. But in front of sum, you added a POS, so it's posum. In front of the ES, the S, you added a POT, and so it's potes. For EST or EST, you added another POT, so you got potest, etc. My rule of thumb for remem remembering this is if it begins with an S, you lead with an S. If it begins with an E, you end with a T. So posum, it starts with an S, so you need a pos. S begins with an E, so you need a T. So it's pot. Notice that everywhere that an S, the, the, the verb sum begins with an S, you're adding a POS. So posum, posumus, posunt. And then everywhere that the verb begins with an E, like S, est, estis, you start, you, you put a, uh, added a pot to the front of it. So it's potest, potest, potestis. That same rule applies for pot aram. Again, aramarasarat, aramasaratasarat. All of those begin with an E, so you lead with a T, P-O-T. Pot, pot aram, pot deras, pot derat, pot, excuse me, let me try that again. Pot aram, pot deras, pot derat, pot aramas, pot deratas, pot derant. And the same thing applies for pot aro. It is, uh, for aro, aris, arit, it's pot aro, pot aris, pot arit, pot arimus, pot aritis, pot arunt. So all of those begin with an E, so you add P-O-T. Now, as far as translation, this word means sum, meant, of course, I am. This means I am able, or I can. So it's I can, you can, he can, we can, you can, they can. Or you could say I am able, you are able, he is able, we are able, you are able, they are able. For the imperfect tense, of course, it's I was able, you were able, he was able, we were able, you all were able, and they were able. For future tense, I will be able, you will be able, he will be able, we will be able, and you will all will be able, and they will be able. Uh, so that's that's the irregular verb posum, and it's uh, pretty easy to remember. Just remember the rule that if it begins with an S, you lead with an S. If you if it begins with an E, you lead with a T. So that's 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 the best way to remember it. So Work on that, get it memorized, and then move on to the next section here. The next section I want to teach you about is something called the complementary infinitive, and this may be new for you. Uh, so take your time on this. If you remember, the second principal part of every verb, like amo, amari, that's the infinitive, and it's simply translated to whatever the verb is. So for amo, amari, it's to love. For mona o, moneri, it means to warn. So let's talk about what a complementary infinitive is. All right. Some verbs require a complementary infinitive to complete the thought. 
So verbs specifically like posum, debo, and auto require a complementary infinitive. For instance, if you say I am able, posum, I am able, that's an incomplete thought. You need to say something after that. So like I am able to run, I am able to go to the store. Same thing with debo, it means I ought. I ought is an incomplete thought, so you have to add something after it. I ought to study. I ought to love my neighbor. Audeo means dare. Don't confuse that with audio with an I. This is audeo, and this means dare. I dare. It needs a, a completing thought. I dare to, to love. I dare to study. I dare to be brave, right? So all of these three, there's these three examples of verbs, and there are others that require a complementary infinitive. So let's look at an example. Rex potest super are Romam. Rex means king. You may have learned that word. Potest, I just taught that to you. It's third person singular of posum. So the king, he is able, or the king is able. Superare. This is the second principal part, or the infinitive, of supero, and it means to conquer. The king is able to conquer Romam. Rome, that's the direct object. It completes, it's the object of the infinitive here. So the king is able to conquer Rome. Let's look at another example. Debes, cancerari, pecuniam, tuam. Debes is the second uh, person singular of debo, so it means you ought, but that's an incomplete thought. Cancerari, you ought to save. This, uh, this is the uh, second principal part or the infinitive of the word conservo. You ought to save, and what are you saving? Here's your direct object, because you know uh, it's the direct object because it has an am, pecuniam, right? You ought to save money, specifically tuam, your money. So you ought to save your money. That's the complementary infinitive. It's a pretty simple idea. You use it in your in, in your English vocabulary all the time. So that's chapter uh, six, uh, pretty short, simple and sweet. Work on it, do the worksheet, and when you're ready, take the quiz.